you have a circuit. So I've got a battery right here, and it's got a delta V, and I have a bulb right here, and it's got a certain resistance. The resistance is something that characterizes the wire. It's something that characterizes the bulb. And it depends upon a couple of properties of the bulb. It depends upon the length, and it depends upon the conductivity. Those are pieces that we'll come back to. The current that flows is equal to the potential difference divided by the resistance of the bulb, okay? So if I have more voltage, I get more current. Or if I take a, a wire and I take a, a iron wire and I place it by copper, copper has a lower resistance than iron. Resistance goes down, current goes up, okay? And so we can put that in here. And this is an equation that we use a bunch to talk about currents and resistance and potential difference in circuits. Okay, now we're going to do a series of experiments. And it's time for the energy balls to come out. Oh, yes. So first off, I want to do this. The amount of electricity that flows in a circuit is given by this. OK. But we talked about another piece with electricity. And that's when it flows, it has to flow in a complete circuit. You have to have a complete circuit. And here's why. If you have a circuit like we saw before, current's coming out of the battery and doesn't go back to the battery, charges build up, and then, and then we don't see that happening. And so the only time you can have a sustained flow of charge is if the charge gets back exactly where it comes from and you have a complete circuit. And we can demonstrate that with the energy balls like this. There's two electrodes here. And you've already noticed how the electrodes work, right? You touch both of them, and then the ball goes like this. You've noticed that? OK, here's a task for you. I want you to hold one electrode, find a friend who's going to hold the other electrode. Oh, no electricity except I think we could make a complete circuit. Oh, yeah. So I want you to go ahead, work with your neighbors. Let's make some complete circuits around the room. Looks like we're getting some complete circuits here. How many people can you get in one circuit and have it still go? Got three? I'm just trying one, try one energy ball at a time. What's the biggest circuit we've gotten? We got three? Come on, we can do, we can do better than that. Got four? Oh, this looks like seven? Excellent. Six? Very nicely done. Now I want to bring up a point. First off, I started with this slide and talked about the physiological effects of currents, OK? And then I've talked about like electricity, and we have to be aware of safety concerns. Then the next thing I ask you to do is hook yourself up into an electric circuit. And you might be asking yourself, Brian, that doesn't sound like necessarily such a great idea, except we can figure out how much of a danger this is apt to be by doing a quick calculation. And one of the things which we're going to talk about at some length in this class, it's what's the resistance of your body. So we're going to take you, okay? This is you, and we're going to model you as this. We're going to model you as a resistor. And basically, we're going to say hand to hand. If I were to take you and replace you hand to hand with the resistor. What resistance do I need in order to be able to model you? And it turns out you have a resistance hand to hand of about 50 kilo ohms, OK? And then the current in the circuit is just equal to delta V divided by R. Well, delta V, that's just the potential difference between the electrodes of the energy ball. We know how much that is because you can stick it up to a meter and you can measure it. It's about 1.5 volts, 1.5 volts divided by 50 kilo ohms, that's your resistance. Kilo, of course, 10 to the third. And if I work that out, I get 30 times 10 to the minus sixth amps, 30 microamps, or if I want to write it that way, 0.030 milliamps. 
Okay? And so the current that I get is actually pretty small. And if we compare that, it's the amount necessary to actually even give you a sensation. It takes three milliamps to even be able to feel it. We're smaller than that by a factor of 100. Suppose you were to take yourself and make yourself a good conductor, like taking your hands and stick your hands in salt water, and then do this. You're still not going to be at the level where you can feel it. Um, so so, so we're, we feel good about this current because the resistance of your body is big enough, the current is going to be small enough that this is not going to be problematic. Now, you folks are doing a series circuit here, okay? And that's a piece that we're going to come back to. And there's a limit to how much you can do this. We've had, I think, was it seven I saw was the biggest circuit? I've done this with up to 20. More than about 20, you can't do it. You can't do it more than about 20. Except with little kids, I've been able to do it with up to 100. How come? They're sweatier. <laughs> Hello? Seriously. The, with their sweaty little kid hands, they have a much lower resistance. Okay? On the other hand, I did this once with an elder hostel group, and this was really a bad thing. Because this is going to be like my big thing, and we're going to make some points. No one could make them go at all. Like one person, I'll pick up the energy ball, and it's like, huh, maybe that one's bad. No, this one's good. Try it again. Nothing. Nobody. And I think as you get older, your skin gets drier, and, and the, the, the layers on the outside get thicker. And I found this morning when I came in and I was testing the energy balls, and it was really, really cold out, and my hands were really dry. I was testing it. I wasn't getting anything. I'm getting closer to that point than I would like to imagine. 